Okay, this is the uh, October 13th, 2020 meeting of the Dundee Township Cemetery Board. Uh, I will read the introductory notice. This message is to be read on behalf of Dundee Township Supervisor Patricia Trish Glees. This meeting of the Dundee Township Cemetery Board will be held via a video audio conference call in accordance with the Illinois Governor's Executive Orders and Disaster Declarations regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Senate Bill 2135, signed into law by Governor Pritzker, addresses electronic meetings during time periods when the governor of the state of Illinois has issued a disaster declaration like the situation we are in now. Pursuant to this new law, this Dundee Township Cemetery Board meeting will be conducted by audio or video conference without a physically present quorum of the Dundee Township Cemetery Board because of a disaster declaration related to COVID-19 and public health concerns affecting the township. Pursuant to the new law, Dundee Township Supervisor Patricia Trish Glees has determined that an in-person meeting at the township building with participants is not practical or prudent because of the disaster. Township officials, legal counsel, appointed board members, and the township administrator will not be physically present at the township building due to the disaster. The meeting video is being recorded and will be made available to the public via the Dundee Township website as provided by law and all votes will be done with a roll call. The general public had the opportunity to receive access to this meeting by requesting via email or telephone call by October 13th, 2020 at 5 p.m. to the Dundee Township Office Manager, Robert Block, at info at dundeetownship.org or 847-428-8092, extension 2. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll call the meeting officially to order and the roll call. Uh, physically present uh, is me. Everybody else, I believe, is going to be remote. Uh, we have uh, Trustee uh, Bartelt. Yes. Uh, Trustee Bern Bernardi. Here. And uh, Cemetery Manager Rako. Here. Okay. Uh, there were no uh, public uh, requests for uh, being able to make comments, and none have uh, joined the meeting. Therefore, we'll assume there are none, and we'll move on. Uh, first item of business is the approval of the minutes from the June 25th, 2020 meeting. Uh, that packet was uh, emailed out to you. So I need a, uh, got a, need a first and a second and then we can make any changes or whatever that you might like. This is Dave Amu. We accept the minutes as printed. I'll, I'll go ahead and second it. Okay. Okay, any uh, comments, questions, changes? Nope. Nope. That's good. Okay, uh, roll call vote then, uh, uh, Trustee Bartelt. Aye. And Trustee Bernardi. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, um, as Mark and I were uh, discussing before the meeting started, a lot of tonight's business is just really uh, updates. Um, so uh, we'll start with the uh, Columbaria uh, project update. We have uh, recently sold, I believe it's three, correct, Mark? Of the, that is correct. The niches. We have three, three sales year to date. And then I also have a fourth sale, I don't know what you call it, pending uh, a lady is making payments. So she won't, it won't be officially sold until she makes her last payment. Okay, and then uh, the other thing is we're continuing uh, to work with our uh, open space uh, manager and the uh, coordinator to try to resolve the uh, 
planting issue out there, uh, looking at perhaps uh, adding a uh, row of something like some hyacinths or other things that would be low maintenance, but add some additional color. And then the other thing is we need to probably, it would be in the spring, I guess, at this point, Mark, uh, by the time we'd get it going now to look at bringing in a landscaping firm to help us with the reinstallation of the grass uh, and so forth uh, on the east side of the Columbaria Garden. Yeah, we still, we, well, if we can discuss that a little bit, I didn't, I didn't know we were still going to do that. Um, made mention in, in, in the minutes as far as the complaints from the public and I will be the first one to say that I have not physically had a complaint. Um, we had some initial comments. Uh, oh my gosh, this goes back well over a year ago. And even Kirby from Open Space had commented that it really, we thought it looked pretty good this year. A lot of the, um, not the enhanced prairie, the existing prairie kind of seeded itself into the enhanced prairie that uh, was, you know, more, um, to find that enhanced prairie was, but there was a lot of color there, uh, you know, late summer, early fall. And besides the fact of not having the time, uh, not knowing what our financial resources are gonna be next year, I personally would like to give it another shot unless the, the big board is, is adamant about getting this thing back to grass. No, that's so, not the case, so. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think, Mark, did it, yep. I think the thing kind of greened up a little bit once we got the rain, though. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't that bad. I, would, I mean, it was last year, I, I'll have to say it looked, it was at a, at a messier stage, I guess. And maybe that's because right. there was a lot of immature plants. And, um, you know, Kirby came out a couple of times and he took out some of the, I guess you call it invasive, whatever right. it was. Um, it, it's all kind of, I don't want to call them weeds. It's all kind of a weedy look, but got rid of a lot of that. We had a, we had a, a, a bad spell with some thistle, which we got under control and our guys pulled a lot of it out of the center garden area, which is right near the columbaria proper. And, uh, you know, if we could, and we had, a, obviously you can tell from our report, which we're going to be talking about, we had a, a wild, uh, year as far as, um, of grass growing and maintenance plus burials. I mean, you know, up 50%. So it was a unfortunate year, uh, caught us off guard as far as the, the busyness. So we couldn't uh, maintain as well as we'd like to. And also we haven't even had the chance to really get properly educated on, you know, what to take out and when to take it out. So I, I personally would rather just put that on the table that for a little bit, unless, you know, somebody else has a, any, any, any thoughts before we, we rip this thing all out. Yeah. Uh, Sounds good. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. And then the rest I'll talk about with the berm. Okay. Well, uh, Mark, just real quick, which, which area are we talking about? Oh, well, all the of grass. the area, you know, we've got the, the sodded area um, inside the columbarium proper right. that eventually will have, you know, structures. Right. And then there's an enhanced prairie that goes around that. Uh, okay. The decision or direction was made at our spring meeting that um, they wanted that all removed, all that prairie removed and plant grass. Well, a couple of things that prevented us from doing it is there's steel edging um, besides the cost, the, 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 the work to get the steel edging out. And then we don't have the equipment to uh, seed and grade large areas. So you know, we were physically, we didn't have the manpower or the time to do it. And it got kind of put on the back burner, which it turned out to be kind of a good thing that I don't think is as bad as what some people think it is. So, All right, so, 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 they, so they don't want the, the, the natural the plants there anymore. They just, they just want it all, all, want it all, single, all single grass. grass. Okay. But I think vi visually it, it takes, I mean, it, it gets your eye away from, the berm, which is still in a in an ugly state, but uh, even that, I mean, with all of the weeds that grew, it was kind of a grass berm or green berm most of the summer, 
And uh, I think once you take down that prairie and now you just got a, a straight line of nothing but grass and then the berm, you can spend more money enhancing that berm than you can just maintaining that that circular or that, that prairie, enhanced prairie perimeter, which um, I think we should just slow down a little bit and, and revisit it. What have other cemeteries done? I don't. I honestly don't know as far as to have a columbarium garden as, as large of an area as we have. Um, we probably, you know, hindsight, uh, this started before I was in charge, obviously. Um, probably shouldn't have made that big of a footprint in the beginning. The, the, the engineering and the drawing was fine, but we probably should have just stuck with what some of the feedback was to get rid of all that extra enhanced prairie and just make it grass but we still would have needed something to um, some type of barrier there, a visual something. I don't, it's, it's not that it's, it's not that bad. And I honestly have not had one negative comment this year. Yeah. And I think the, a uh, lot of the initial comments about removing the enhanced prairie uh, were generated early this year before the plants kind of came in. They weren't doing that well. And uh, there was a lot of concern that a vast majority had died out. Uh, yeah. But they appeared to have come back. And yeah. uh, so, yeah, that way we can certainly, you know, hang in there. And I, I think some of the comments we have gotten are people are like, if you would drive by the backside of, uh, the post office in Carpentersville or the across from Walmart, there's a couple of big dirt piles and that's just a bunch of weeds. And yeah. I think to the uneducated eye, there are a lot of people that drive by the cemetery and they go, what are all those weeds doing uh, next to the graves? They think the entire prairie is nothing but weed. Yeah. And uh, they and, don't and understand. Yeah, the other thing too, I mean, without getting, you know, any costs from contractors to, to do that work, which like I say, is beyond the scope of our ability and, and time and equipment, which we don't have. But, you know, we had a quote oh, a year ago for a hundred foot of eight foot uh, cedar fencing, which was around, I don't know, like around $5,000. You could do a lot with that fence to visually enhance that whole area. And even if the thing was removed, you know, 10 years down the road or whatever, be a lot cheaper than tearing out all of that steel edging and plants and just the extra maintenance. I, I think that uh, if, if, if it became an issue, I think $5,000 or 6,000 on a fence would be uh, money well spent versus ripping out all of that uh, vegetation. Mm -hmm. So Okay. That's my thought. All right. Well, then why don't we uh, move on to the, uh, if we have anything more to say about the burial and the uh, lot sales. Well, I'm just going to give you just, just an update, some numbers. And again, I apologize. I didn't get you guys my, my chart that I normally do because I just got this done today. Um, a year to date or uh, January 1st through uh, September 30th, we've had a total of 122 burials. Uh, breakdown is file if you follows if you wanted to make a note. We had 78 full size burials, 37 cremations, three columbarium uh, in urnments, and four infant burials. Last year, same period, January through September, we had 46 full size burials, 28 cremations, five columbarium in urnments, three infant burials for a total of 82. So 82 for 2019 and 122 for this year, 2020. Wow. <laughs> and just a to touch on that, which maybe Bob was going to, or uh, in the financial report, you can look at our lot sales. Um, I think we're, we're well over budget with the lot sales or grave sales for this um, year. We've already met the budget next. We've already exceeded our estimated income on, uh, Lot sales by thirty five thousand dollars. So that's just ties in with the actual burials. 
which goes into their financial report, which I could have waited 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> which if I would have looked down there. It, it's all going to run together anyway. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, yeah, so then rolling into the financial report, um, it is just what Mark was saying. Uh, uh, if something were to be where it should be, um, it would be at 58.3% uh, through September. And as you can see, a lot of the things like lot sales are already at a 154%. Um, and uh, gra the grave opening is at 76. So yes, we are doing well there. Um, and really on the expense side, the only thing that uh, we're going to be a little bit short on uh, well, actually two things. I think the uh, communication and telephone uh, budget because of the uh, increases this year and the cost of Comcast and uh, is going to be a little over. And then the uh, other professional services category, that's where we have our uh, annual maintenance fee for the, whoops, hold on one second. Our supervisor, yeah was here and I didn't see her, where'd she go? Now I'll watch for her again. Um, the other professional services, as I was gonna say, is the uh, fee for the uh, cemetery software and then the alarm service um, at the building. And uh, those have both gone up a little bit. So we're probably gonna be a hundred and a half or 200 over on that account for the year. That's not bad. No. So basically we're doing quite well on that. And uh, that'll tie into the, uh, the next category, which is the uh, ever present uh, berm discussion and disposal of dirt. All right, as I reported uh, for um, anybody who's at the June meeting, uh, it, it really is going very well. Uh, Anthony's got the, the berm uh, drivable, which really helps. Uh, and as I stated, I think it was in the minutes, uh, the biggest thing that, well, uh, initially we, we couldn't drive it. Now that we can drive it, we can actually, uh, you know, dump it on top of the existing pile. And then we have a lot of room as far as width. So we can, uh, we don't have to go any further towards the lake or the pond, whatever you want to call it, the water retention, which is still, um, we're going to take another look at it this fall. Uh, we stopped before we have to start making the turn. So we're good uh, through spring as far as um, not going any further north. Uh, we can just continue to let it spill over towards uh, on our side of the property, obviously, you know, on the west side of the berm. And uh, we'll be in good shape till, you know, next summer sometime. And then we have to make a determination if we're gonna, what we're gonna do with the lake. If we're gonna just go straight through, uh, possibly if we need to have some engineering done to uh, make up the difference where we fill it in. As far as uh, the, the, the um, it was never designed to hold water, but it has been working. The engineer, uh, unrelated or unrelated to the berm discussion, but when we're talking about the. Uh, filling it in it does serve as a filter uh when it gets up to a certain level right now it spills into the prairie so it's pretty clean water that's going into the sediment is going into the pit or the old pit whatever you want to call it so um before we start filling that we're gonna have to find out if if we want to make the the uh, pond any bigger or if it's even required or just naturally let it flow towards uh the prairie where it's been going and where the uh, original uh, topographical uh, survey maps show that we can't uh, we can't fill any of that that in. We have to let the water continue to to flow that direction because it's a natural flow. So right now, to sum that up, we're in pretty good shape. Worst case scenario, if if we can't come to because solution is, you know, every couple of years we're going to have to just uh, have some you know, offer some free fill to someone and have, uh, have them take it away, which is, was briefly discussed as a suggestion by someone at one time, and, but we're not quite there yet. 
Okay. Um, one other thing with the berm, and it kind of goes back to the um, discussion about the landscaping and so forth. Uh, the other thought has been, uh, we are, of course, a little bit ahead um, on finances and uh, did see a site uh, came across my desk the other day uh, where we can buy evergreen trees uh, for a fairly reasonable uh, price, uh, less than 300 for a uh, 12 foot evergreen. Uh, so plant along the berm? Yeah, to plant along the berm to kind of be like a natural fence yeah. in front of it. Okay. So that's another thought we might throw out. Okay. Okay, um, update on uh, the memorial tree and bench request and the, any of the other stuff there, if you've got any updates. Okay, or... yeah, just on the, on the tree, we had a family that wanted to donate a tree. This was oh, it's actually started last year. We discussed it at the June meeting. I contacted the family. We just did plant six trees, five in the uh, in, in a new section. One was a replacement for were additional trees that uh, were on the original plan but never got planted. Um, and then the family did donate a, a tree, a maple tree, which we planted um, last week. Um, the bench request, I've heard nothing. Uh, one was, uh, I think we saw it in the minutes, the Doderline family, she wanted to bench on her um, on her lots or on her grave site some, in some location. She was working with Jim Warner from uh, Warner Monument or Jim Warner Monuments, and uh, I kind of put the ball in his court because she was adding or replacing a stone, and they were going to discuss. He was going to make some recommendations for a bench, which he has two unused graves, which um, I've not heard anything from her or him in regards to that. And then there was another open uh, bench issue on a lot where. Uh, we planted a tree uh, on someone's grave, unused grave. Um, that was, uh, you know, done under uh, the last uh, cemetery manager. We don't know why we planted it there. We were told to plant it there, so we did. The family's aware of it, and they also uh, had been working with Jim Warner, and uh, he has had no response from the suggestions if they wanted to put a memorial bench because we use the one grave. So those are still open issues as far as the benches go. Uh, well, next, how, let me to, go well, ahead. Mark, how, how do we handle that then? So if, so if someone has purchased a grave site and we've now put a tree there, do we have to take the tree out? No, that was why we were going, we don't, we don't allow benches. And I came up with a suggestion instead of, they don't, of course they don't really want the tree taken out and they talked about a memorial and the bench topic came up. There, there is a couple of them in the cemetery, but we, people can't just buy benches and, and plant them wherever they want to. Right. But we were going to make an exception on this one because we used one of their graves. And obviously, I mean, if they wanted it removed, we would remove it. Well, of course they liked the tree, but they were also looking, they weren't looking for anything from us other than permission to uh, put a small bench as a memorial to a uh, another family member who was not buried there just with their name on it. And uh, we brought it up in June. And uh, until we get some drawings or pictures of what they would like, we can't act on it. So I have nothing to show you guys. And they have not, uh, it's been probably about a year since I've had any direct communication with the family in regards to that. So that's how it happened. Okay, so, tree, so, tree, tree got planted in error, I would say, on our part. And, um, you know, if they wanted to, to recover the grave space, we'd have to uh, cut the tree down and uh, dig out the roots. Right. Okay. So this is, this is a very, very special situation. Yep. Okay. Not, a, right. not a typical situation. The other, the other yeah. bench we're talking about, Leo, that was a family just uh, um, that, uh, the, the family, the ladies in her 90s and started out kind of a, as a joke she wanted a bench so she can sit when she visits 
And I said, well, we, we can't just put benches anywhere. And then we came up this, with this uh, memorial bench idea on the two ungrave, unused graves, which they may or may not use, but it would go in the same places where headstones would go. Okay. So uh, that's, that's still open until, you know, maybe something will happen this winter and I can report back to you guys after in our January meeting. All right, I appreciate that, Mark. Yep. Let me go to the next one, Bob. Sure. Uh, the Osario uh, matter, uh, that's still open. Um, I don't know if you have anything to report on that, Bob. I gave you all no. the documentation I had. Uh, this for Leo and, and Dave as a refresher. This was a grave that uh, a lady lost her husband, came in to make arrangements, and she thought she had three graves in a row. Well, it turns out she had two side by side, and the third grave she had purchased was five or six graves away from uh, the other, the, her existing graves. We think an error was made on the uh, cemetery's part, oh, probably 15 to 19 years ago. We don't know why um, she, she didn't know she had purchased a third grave that wasn't contiguous to her other ones. So we didn't know, we, we don't know how to handle it. There's nothing available. I can't swap with anybody. I contacted a family that has two graves next to her existing graves to see if they were willing to um, trade to go somewhere else in our cemetery and uh, they weren't they were very cooperative but they they don't want to move uh, they're obviously nobody there yet but they want to be near other families so we've exhausted all of the possibilities to get a third grave or a grave that touches her existing two so I don't know what we're going to do something that how happened many, a long time ago yeah how many um how many spots are currently in use for, for this family? Two. It's her husband and her son. And she thought she was going next to her husband, but uh, there's five graves in between her and her husband. And I've not heard from her um, since this happened. And I, I'm waiting for the phone call to ask one of these days what we're going to do. So. Yeah. Uh, and do we stack one on no. top of the other? No. No, okay. we can't. It's we don't, we're not deep enough. So I right. mean, I'm if, out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if 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 she did know, I mean that uh, the grave wasn't there. She's not. She's not sharing that with us. Um, the only thing looking at records is when she bought the third grave. There was still a grave available next to her husband. So that's why we're, I'm pretty convinced that it was just an error on the lot number. Um, it's very complicated. I can't even explain to you how the, the numbering system works, but the guy went the wrong direction and he thought he was putting the grave right next to her, but he, he skipped a whole lot. So it was there. I should think it was a, a, a numerical error when he wrote the order and it just, uh, nobody, caught it for all those years there's there's no way that there's no way anybody could have caught it except the person that sold it to him or the person that sold the lot next to him that would have been the first eye opener which i would think that would probably raised a red flag but it nothing was done so okay that's all i got on that so that's going to be ongoing until we come up with a resolution and the last thing, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, Lopez Monument encroachment, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the only, the encroachment, uh, kind of a bad word to use there. Lady bought five, four or five graves, and it basically uh, it, it's been resolved. She wanted uh, her stone centered in an area that we normally wouldn't have done, but the way it worked out, um, she got it where she wanted it, and it won't have any, it'll only affect one grave where she signed a letter that she cannot add a headstone to one of the five existing grave or five remaining graves she has because she, she self encroached on her own grave. She didn't leave enough room for a headstone. So she signed off and uh, it was installed and 
I'm assuming everyone is happy. And it didn't mess up anything visually for us. We've always centered stones over one, two, or three graves, depending upon how many they were encompassing the, head, the headstone. And this is kind of a unique case. She wanted, she, or there's, she's a, there's a picture on the headstone, which she wanted the picture of her mother centered over the three graves. But we only ended up using two of the three. It's just off-centered, but it's not going to have any visual effect on anything down the road. So that's resolved. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, new business. This is a fun one. If you guys haven't heard the first one here, you want to take it, Mark, or you want me to take it? Uh, sure. I'll give them an overview. Uh, last Tuesday, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, a car uh, went off the roadway approximately by the used car dealer at the north end of our cemetery. He drove with one wheel on the highway, one wheel in the cemetery, all, almost all the way down to Route 72 uh, going south. Uh, he took out a row of bushes um, that were ours, and then he took out several headstones, uh, two large upright monuments and a smaller uh, slant-faced upright mon monument. And uh, got a copy of the police report which absolutely is useless at this point because all it gives is the guy's name. Everything else was um, removed from the report as far as his address. Uh, we know the insurance company is Liberty Mutual. There's no policy number. We're assuming he's insured. And uh, I contacted, obviously, the office when this occurred. Bob contacted our insurance company, which said that... Uh, even if this guy's insurance company doesn't pay, our insurance does not cover uh, the headstones because they're not ours, they belong to the families. I've heard from two of the three uh, families involving the headstones and just uh, told them that uh, I have nothing to report. Uh, I don't have uh, all the information gathered yet, so I would let them know as soon as I know the procedure. The stones aren't destroyed uh, as far as, uh, the, you know, they weren't broken in half or anything. There's gouges and scratches and a corner missing off of one stone. Uh, if they if they weren't replaced, uh, people could probably live with them. Um, if we, in, but from what I understand so far, unless something has changed, it's going to be up to their own personal insurance to take care of this, but most of these, the people that bought them or own them are, uh, they're gone. I mean, these are, are stones that go back, you know, 50, 60, 70 years possibly. So I don't know if they're going to have any insurance. I mean, I don't know if my homeowner's insurance would cover my grandpa's stone if something happened to it. I don't, I don't think it would, but that's where we're at. And Bob, you can okay. jump in and... <clears throat> Tell yes, us, uh, uh, attorney's comments. So uh, basically, I then I talked to our uh, corporate attorney, and uh, he uh, his response was that uh, we, as stewards of the cemetery, have a duty on behalf of the grave owners that uh, if their property is damaged in our basically we're watching over it that uh, if they're not able to be identified then we would have the requirement to try to repair or replace uh, the damaged property um, as mark said in talking with uh, torma who is our township insurance company uh, first of all the bushes um, and trees are not covered under any policy. Uh, so that's going to be a cost that uh, we have to go directly after uh, this gentleman's insurance. And then uh, what they will do uh, is they will assist us if a couple of these gravestones do need to be replaced in preparing the 
uh, paperwork and so forth that would need to be filed with Liberty Mutual to try to seek uh, compensation uh, for the repair and or replacement um, of the stones. They're also uh, attempting to obtain from the East Indy Police Department the uh, total report uh, because they are an insurance company uh, that would give them the uh, information needed to contact uh, Liberty Mutual and uh, determine what kind of benefits or uh, policy limits the individual has. Yeah, my, you know, my suggestion is we price everything, bushes, gray, you know, everything that was torn up, all the damage, all that stuff, and file it against, against the gentleman's insurance and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Mark has been proceeding with that. Uh, he's been in contact with uh, a Warner Monuments and uh, uh, he, that gentleman is putting together a, a bill, if you will, uh, to cover the replacement of the damaged uh, monuments. Okay. And then we'll have, uh, we've got our open space group uh, trying to estimate the uh, value of the bushes and then we'll have to go from there with the small stuff. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Keep you so, busy. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's always something different when Mark calls, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know. We, yeah, right. Exactly. All right. Uh, anything on decoration issues? Uh, what I'm what I'm going to do, I'm not going to dwell on it tonight. But we've got to come up with a with a plan. We have a couple major uh, issues that just duplicate uh, or multiply daily. Uh, you guys have heard about crosses before. Um, right. We had a height problem. We got most of them uh, down to to 36 inch height. We we reset a lot of them ourselves. Um, well, not a lot of them. I mean, anything that we, we lowered everything we could. Uh, there were a, a couple of them that uh, the family took care of. Cooperation has been pretty good. Our new dilemma is started in our new section where a family erected or had a cross built out of four by fours. Uh, turned out to be probably about 42 to 44 inches tall. And before we could even jump on that, three other families uh, liked it so well, they duplicated uh, the original, which they're getting, everybody tries out through the next guy. These are four by fours that have caps on the end, like, you know, well, like a fence post cap. And we've got uh, solar lights built in, um, like a light that you put on top of a fence post uh, instead of a cap. We got that on the top. They're adding uh, hooks for plants, uh, crosses. Um, I'll send you guys some pictures. Um, and if, if anybody is interested, if you wanted to come by and physically <laughs> see this, so you can see what we're dealing with. But I, I think we're going to have to make a, a, a change this winter. And it's going to obviously upset a lot of people come the spring. But very simply, change our rules uh, as far as crosses, that there are no modifications and no decorations allowed on a cross except for a crucifix. Um, that is it. I mean, no end caps, no solar lights, uh, no plant hangers, no plant hooks. Um, and just keep, and that's going to have to go throughout the whole cemetery that anybody has any of these that are in violation, they're going to have to just be removed and we're going to have to deal with it. The other thing we have is shepherd's hooks. Apparently, we've got a lot of people with welding capabilities. Um, used to have a shepherd's hook. It started out with single shepherd crooks. Uh, this goes back before my, my time, 10 years plus, that when shepherd hooks became popular, there are a lot of single hooks, which are very nice. We got the plants off the ground. And then we started getting double shepherd's hooks and uh, wasn't too bad except for height. We got some up to, you know, six, six and a half feet. Now the latest is we've got shepherd's hooks that have four to six hooks 
plus two arms with uh, pot holders on either end, making kind of like a crucif uh, like a cross uh, effect to it, with solar lights on the tops, and we've had uh, we've got up to eight eight or more plants on a shepherd's hook now. So my suggestion is to come up with some language again for next year that nothing more than two hooks or two plants. I don't want everybody to have to throw all their hooks away. If they've got a multiple hook like that has three or four hooks, they're only gonna be able to allow uh, two plants. And uh, uh, we have to try something because it's one of those visual things that it, it's competition. As soon as somebody has it, the neighbor tries to outdo them and it just is out of control. Any simple I wonder, thoughts? I wonder if that's how the, uh, I say, I wonder if that's how the uh, thing started with the pyramids in Egypt. I don't know, <laughs> but it, uh, we have a problem at the East Sunday Cemetery. Right. Totally agree. So I don't know, a lot of people, I mean, we've, we've really buckled down this year. Um, Eric has been really good with uh, our Hispanic population out there to explain to them why they can't have what they have. And uh, they're very cooperative. Most of them are cooperative as far as understanding and uh, understand, you have to be careful. I mean, how do you have to tell somebody that it just looks messy because there's so much, but um, that's what's happening. And that's some of our complaints. Um, a lot of our complaints are, why does this person have 12 plants and the lady that complies with our rule has two? So we're just going to have to uh, try this and see if it works. Or it's I, it, the best thing that ever happened is just no decorations. And I don't know if that would ever fly, but if you ever go by a cemetery that doesn't have all the stuff that we have, they look pretty nice just with stones mm, and an sure. occasional plant. Don't, don't disagree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You've got I mean, a lot. You come lot through. Around I mean, this. <laughs> and our new section, unfortunately is getting, it's starting to look like, uh, you know, our last wow. square section 14 out front and it's um, it, 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 it's a uh, much better if anybody saw it early spring or early summer, late spring, early summer. We've uh, got a lot of compliments trying to keep it down, but we still have many issues. And I think we just got to take the, the tough road and just uh, pull the stuff that the people don't understand. And we have to get their attention somehow to get back on track. Yeah, right. I agree. Well, it's a lot, e a lot easier if we have it reduced to writing and we can have it in uh, the multiple language handout form. Right. And, uh, well, I think we're just going to have a decoration handout and, and, and dwell on these, these crosses and, and shepherd's hooks and just, um, I'm not, you know, our, our rules say five feet. And we can't control, we can't go out there and measure every one of these and get them down to 60 inches. I mean, they're, they're five foot three, five foot four you know, with the finial on the top, those don't bother us and, and people don't get too excited about it. But when they start adding uh, welding shafts and, uh, oh man, we've got some creative uh, rebar uh, uh, plant, uh, they're, they're not shepherd's hooks, they're, they're, they're creations. Uh, they're, they're a welder's dream, I guess, but uh, it's a mess. It's just not, it's not attractive, it's out of control. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, budget issues. Um, there's, I guess, the good portion, and then there's a uh, a bad portion. Um, the good portion is, I think, with uh, this year's um, excess funding, uh, what we're going to recommend is to move. Um, a goodly portion of whatever revenues were over budget with um, back to the state of Illinois fund downstate and have that as the seed fund for the installation of the second columbaria whenever that date may occur. Um, so we're looking at 
somewhere maybe 30 to 40,000, moving that down there just because we get uh, significantly uh, increased interest and uh, takes it, uh, makes it harder to move the money uh, back for everyday projects. The uh, bad portion of the budget is certainly dependent on uh, what happens uh, November 3rd and 4th when we find out the um, results of the township's request for additional funding on the general levy. Um, if that resolution or if that uh, referendum does not pass, um, I'm afraid there's going to be a, a significant um, trimming of the budget for all the departments and uh, will probably necessitate a special meeting of the uh, cemetery board uh, as we're moving into the budget cycle with the big board in November and December. Silence. Silence. <laughs> it's all we hear. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll know if you, uh, you see the results or whatever, why, uh, you know, if it does happen to carry, which we're still hopeful, um, that'll be good. If not, um, it is going to be a difficult couple of years. Okay. Um, the next one I only added on there because I was uh, had a couple of comments from uh, Mark's staff that uh, they were looking for a specific modification to the regulations, but uh, I think maybe that's what you were discussing with the decorations. Correct. Yep. And, that's and what so I was going to say. So, basically, is the decoration issues that so. we just need some clarification. Um, I, I don't know how much of it's going to be actually a modification to our um, existing rules and regulations and more of a clarification sheet, I think. Um, I think it would leave our rules alone with, you know, crosses limited to 36 inches, shepherd's hooks already has, the only thing it has is five feet tall and one plant per hook. Um, I don't know if it really is going to be a, a requirement to um, if, if it's going to require a, a, a board vote to, to change that, to, to put that in the rules, other than, uh, you know, to get it down to uh, two hooks or, or, or just two plants and leave the rest up to us with a separate handout in uh, English and Spanish as far as what the requirements for a pl planter's or cross and uh, shepherd's hook consist of. Okay. And, and the deal with, I mean, again, the, the no hooks for plants on a cross. I mean, it really, to me, it, it defaces a cross. It's not the purpose of a cross to make a, uh, a landing zone and a, uh, a plant hanger out of it. Correct. Agreed. So nothing major, just to tweak some of the language and okay. the clarification sheet. All right. Do you have anything further you want to add in a manager's report? Well, no, just maybe, I mean, it's not really new business. There's something to think about that will require board action is, is to think about the, uh, um, I do not have any, any facts or figures, but we should consider increasing our, our fees uh, from lot sales or uh, grave prices and opening fees. Uh, I don't have, uh, I don't have anything to support um, the, the pricing. I don't have. I don't have any pricing suggestions. Just that I was telling Bob earlier, talking to a lot of the summit or the, a lot of the funeral directors, um, we're getting a lot of people even from out of town because we're probably the best bang for the buck, even for a non-resident, uh, which is twice the price of a of a resident. Uh, one of the suggestions I think I think maybe Bob you had mentioned because we have a lot of people that the way it's worded, a township resident. There, uh, we get a lot of families digging up relatives 
not not digging them up, locating relatives <laughs> that, that live that live in the township, and we're putting graves, uh, which is nothing we can't we can't control it. Putting names in a relative's name, putting graves in a relative's name, and sending the deed to that house. Well, I mean, all it is is just uh, bypassing a uh, uh, their legal address because once they have that deed in their hand. Um, it's in someone else's name and technically they that person is the one that uh, is supposed to sign off for burial rights uh, but in so many cases we have these people are deceased when the time comes we have a relative or a child or the next of kin which we don't we, we can't go back to the original owner anyway for that signature if they tell us that uh, this is a family plot then they want the person buried there. We, we put them there. Right, so one right. thing that uh, that would be is to uh, on our price sheet just list everything as the um, I don't know if we can do this or not as the out of town price, and then with a uh, re township residents uh, receive a discount, which you could obviously you'd have to put what the discount was. You can't just make it up, but uh, would that even help or would it slow down this and we've got we got some families that own five six seven eight nine graves i mean i know them personally i know their phone numbers when they come to fill out the contract because <laughs> they own so many but it's not really for them um what, what kind of revenue difference are we talking about it's twice i mean it's like right now in a, a grave is 825 dollars for a resident 1650 for a non-resident uh, but but what are we talking about you know in a year are we talking about five oh, graves we're talking about 40 graves oh i i leo i don't i don't know right. it, it's it's significant um it's and and i've asked um a lot of people and not a lot of people some people have made comment that well the funeral home told me it's 825 dollars i said yeah if, if you live here well, then they even go so far as, oh, well, yeah, but the funeral director told me that, you know, my, my sister could buy it. Well, you know, how are you going to stop that? Except I have asked the one funeral director who does send us a lot of business to please do not discuss pricing with these people as far as where they live. Just let us do that. Right. So I hope that that might uh, eliminate some of it, too. They just assume, and I'm not sure that they even knew they knew our graves were eight hundred twenty-five dollars. I don't think they realized they were sixteen hundred and fifty dollars for a new re for a non-resident, and uh, that's where getting back to this possibility of, of pricing just to list. So all the all the funeral directors have all of our prices sixteen fifty. If a family comes in and lives in Dundee Township, they'll get a significant surprise of half price. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are other area? Because I think we had this discussion about a year or so ago on pricing. Um, how do we compare with the other uh, cemeteries? I don't. That's that's what I said. I'm not prepared to come up with okay. any suggestions as far as increases. But I. But in the next couple of months, um, the city of Elgin, you know, they they run. Uh, they they have a cemetery, and I was talking to their director oh, about six weeks ago, and I gave him a copy of ours because they were going through the same thing that I'm talking about, and he was going to share me share me share with me <laughs> theirs as soon as um it was finalized so i'm gonna this week hopefully get a hold of him and find out if they pass on their new one so i have some uh um something to compare it to okay yeah and, and as far as the private uh cemeteries um we're dramatically lower oh yeah i mean like river, river, river valley in west Dundee is i mean more than twice our price so, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to say we need a significant increase, but again, I mean, I don't like hearing about the, uh, you know, budget of significant decreases or significant changes if this referendum doesn't pass. But um, I hope it's still favorable for us because we bring in a big chunk of our total budget from revenue from the outside that isn't um, tax money. Mm -hmm. so, you know, hopefully it's, it's not Mark, as bad as. Yeah, hey Mark, what, what, yep. 
might want to consider, um, you know, if somebody gives permission, if a resident gives somebody in their family permission to be built, to be buried there. Yeah. That because this individual is not, that's going to be buried there is not a resident that our um, burial fees would double. In other words, in other words, you can get a cheap lot, but it's going to oh, cost but, you quite much to bury them. Yeah, hey, but yeah, I, that never. I never really thought about that. I know a lot of people have asked. You know, when they know that they they're getting a, what usually comes up is they know that they're they're paying half the price for the lot, and they want to know if they're getting a discount on the opening. Well, then you know, I very honestly tell them we only have one fee. Doesn't matter if you're a resident or non-resident. <laughs> But that could be a possibility. Um, I don't know. I have to see what what other communities do. If if they have a flat fee for opening and closing, the resident non resident, or um, yeah. or if if you want to do it this way, we'll give you the yeah. If you want to play the game for getting the grave half price, then right. uh, you're going to pay twice the burial fee. Right. That's... I don't. Is that legal? That might be a question, Bob, for uh, our attorney. Well, I don't think there's anything that says you can't no. can't do that. The only question then becomes, then we'd have to make, I think, uh, put you in almost a position of making a couple of judgments, just like we've talked before. Um, you had somebody that lived in the area for 25 for years. Their whole now they've retired moved. for 10 years to Florida. Do we, you know, now charge them the out of area fee, even though they paid taxes and everything here for 25. So that's, yeah. that, well, that's, that's where it gets a little sticky. Yeah, that's what we've been doing with, um, well, I just sold a family, guy lived here for 35 years in West Dundee, moved to Florida, came back, moved to Gilbert's, came back in and bought four graves at the out of town rate. And, you know, he, I mean, uh, he was joking. He said, you know, no discount for you know, living here for 35 years. And I said, you know, you should have bought him before you left. And uh, <laughs> but he, he, he bought, I mean, he wanted to be in, in our cemetery. And so he bought four graves at the out of town rate. And uh, I, what Bob's point is, this happens, you know, quite often. Um, but what are you going to do? I mean, we've had the only time right. that I've ever waived it is somebody that uh, has lived here their whole life and they become ill, they move in with their their son or daughter in Cary and, uh, you know, we give them the, the township rate because they're technically, they were, they were living here before they became ill and went to to live with a kid. So we, we've made some exceptions, but uh, for these people that moved and came back, we haven't budged. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving out. Okay. <laughs> That's a very good advice. I'll, I'll, All right, well, I'll, I'll get some, I'll get some, some figures. And uh, I say, even I was telling Bob before the meeting started tonight, if, if we get this done this fall, we do a January meeting, you know, we can even implement this, you know, like, you know, March 1st or something or February 1st. Yep. I mean, we don't have to, um, there's no publishing that we have to do for an increase. Um, you know, when the, when the fees change, the fees change. I mean, we could do it as, we could do it as soon as that meeting, as far as that goes, it wouldn't really make any difference. And the only thing I'd have to, I guess, grandfather, anybody that I've, I'm working with or pending, um, you know, whether it be a cremation or a purchase, I mean, I would probably honor that, but new customers would be the new price. So I'll have some facts and figures next meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything going on or uh, we covered everything? I think we've covered everything. Yep. All right. Okay. Then I, I guess we'll take a motion to uh, adjourn. Um, this is Dave. I'll move it. Okay. That I'll, leaves Leo with the second. I'll second. And okay. Robert, can you stay on for a brief second sure. afterwards? Absolutely. Perfect. All right, uh, so uh, we'll take the roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Bartelt. Aye. And Trustee uh, Leo. Aye. 
Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to uh, stop the recording and then we can uh, discuss anything else. Perfect. Um, 